All right. Well, welcome back to the Temporal Eternal Podcast. We are so glad that you have joined us today. Uh, this is uh, an awesome week. What's up? That we are, are going to be having a focus. Brennan, Matt, how are you guys doing? Doing good. How are you? Uh, doing well. Doing. Awesome, man. Well, the Temporal uh, uh, Temporal Eternal Podcast once again is uh, is really our focus is just discussing how to live for eternity in our relationships, ambitions, and time. How are you, right? Donald? So just an, I'm I'm good, man. I uh, okay, I'm, I'm good. very good. I got I got a haircut. I see so that. Good. You're looking good. Oh, you know, ten, ten pounds lighter. News here. Sorry, I had to break <laughs> yeah, it up. So. You always ask us how are we doing, but you always keep on going like, oh, I'm good without even you know, dude, man, saying anything. I'm I'm blessed, man. No, really, I am, I am I'm blessed right now. So. Took took the car to the mechanic yesterday. Had a had a minor thing that they had to fix, and they did not charge me for it. So I was like, "Hey, thank you, Jesus." So that's amazing. That's a little awesome testimony. Man. But uh, but anyways, hey, we are going to dive in. Uh, this week is Holy Week, which means this is the week that us as Christians um, who believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior of our life, mm -hmm. this is the week that uh, he was arrested, he was beaten, um, he hung on a cross. He died on what we'd call a Good Friday. He was he was buried for a few days, and then he was resurrected on Sunday, and that's why we call it Resurrection Sunday. Um, some people call that Easter. <clears throat> it's it's beyond just a uh, about bunnies and eggs, but it's really about uh, the story of Jesus and really the everything with our faith. Like literally, I mean, this is everything. So we really wanted this to be a, a big focus of our podcast today and i know brennan had some really cool thoughts just to start us off so i'm going to throw it over to you bren yeah so um this kind of thought process for us today kind of came from uh, a quote that i had seen floating around from a couple different people in a couple different places but uh, it is this it says on the night of jesus's arrest peter was willing to kill for christ but not to die for him and it kind of speaks to this lesson that there's a type of counterfeit faithfulness that's willing to kill for Christ, but not willing to die for him. And so this is referencing uh, when Peter, you know, when they're in the garden and they're about to arrest Jesus, uh, Peter actually draws his sword. And uh, when a, one of the uh, individuals there, he he cuts off his ear. And um, so it's, it's acknowledging that. And then it references also then that idea that mm -hmm. later on uh, when they arrest Jesus and they're not a, sure what's going to happen. And Peter, people are starting to uh, accuse Peter and say, Hey, you're, you're one of the guys that was with Jesus. Right. And we know that Peter denies him three times. And so it's kind of that, that contrast there that he was willing to draw a sword and protect and e even maybe to the point of harm this person to killing them for Jesus's sake. Right. But then, when when he kind of had that disconnect, uh, he denies Jesus because he knew that possibly meant if they were going to kill Jesus, they could have killed him. And um, so, yeah, I, I think that's a, a very, very thought provoking thing for us as we come upon uh, Holy Week, as, as Donald said. Um, and I want to kind of start the conversation there, guys, is is what what does that really imply Um to, to see that kind of contrast. And I think it's very easy to place judgment maybe on Peter and his reactions. Uh, but I think that today for each of us uh, uh, as followers of Christ in the church, for the church at large, uh, it really shines some light and gives some big questions for where's, where's the level of our faithfulness towards the Lord? And are we willing to step out in faith uh, in the correct ways or are we kind of falling back in, into some of our, our programmed responses? Um, so, yeah, I, I want to start the conversation kind of with that thought there is, is where is where is that level of faithfulness that we have to Christ um, when we reflect on what he did and the sacrifice he made uh, by dying on the cross for us? <laughs> is it working? Hello? No, I ever, we're good, Matt. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Donald, I, was, I was letting you talk, man. Go I was ahead. just letting you talk, man. Uh, go ahead. I want to be the, I, I, I want to be the caboose right now. Okay. You can be the caboose of the train, bro. Um, no, I, I think it's, uh, you know, when Brennan brought this thought up, um, 
a lot of things come to mind. And even as you're sharing the story, Brendan, like I love how the Holy Spirit does things because we, we prep sometimes. We definitely prep, you know, um, a little bit for these podcasts. But we want it to be organic discussions. And I got to tell you, like so many times the Holy Spirit just starts kind of laying <laughs> things in like while we're chatting. So it's kind of cool. So um, <clears throat> so thank you, Jesus, for that. Shout out to God. Um, here's Here's the thing is that 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 question sometimes you go like okay what does that really mean and i'll and i'll maybe create like a another example of it um in modern day american christianity <clears throat> will fight for something politically that maybe aligns with the word of god or aligns with our faith we will protest for certain things we disagree with but and i'm not saying this is across the board but i do think that there is an issue with some of us and the reason i say is i i can fall into this i think we all can where yes i'll fight on behalf of god yes i'll i'll protest yes i'll do do all those things but if jesus asked me to sacrifice something i i don't know about that if if Christ asked me to die to myself, to my wants and desires, um, I I don't know about that, and and that and so that's why and I I, I don't want to like I'll, I'll just I'll just go to this next thing. My my pastor, um, Pastor Marty, out of Revealed Church in Sur Surprise El Mirage, Arizona. Shout out. He had this really amazing quote from his message this past Sunday, so it was just so relevant as this, our, this is our topic. It says, is Jesus just the mascot of your religion, or he is, is he the center of your faith? <clears throat> is he the mascot of your religion, or is he actually the center of your faith? Like, is this like, like am, am I actually following Jesus with my life, with, with or, am I, or am I living my life and just dragging Jesus along? And just giving Jesus shout outs and, and saying I'm living for Christ. Uh, but really I'm I'm living maybe uh as as a Christian, right? Hold on, right? I'm I'm living as a Christian in the things that the Bible's called us to do, you know, having gentleness, um, giving to the widows and and the orphans, you know, some of the principles, but one of the just foundational underlying things of the gospel and of the word of God is that we, uh, to, to live as Christ and to die as gain. It's like, I have to die to myself, die to my flesh, die to my dreams, die to my, all the things that I want to do what God wants and have to trust that, Hey, that's going to be even better. And sometimes it might not feel better. Sometimes it might not pay better. Sometimes it might be more uncomfortable, but it's not just about me at all. Really. It's all about his kingdom. So, those are some initial mm -hmm. thoughts at the beginning I have. Man, that was like a like a debate power ending final thing right there. <laughs> like that was like that was good. But okay, so when it comes to, you know, America, right? We're in America. We have all of this ability, we have all this time and freedom to go worship God, to go follow Jesus, to do it publicly. And, you know, sometimes people do it, you know, just to do it and to be out there and say they're a Christian, right? Sometimes they're just doing it to do it. But a lot of times the Mer Americans take it for granted. Or for granted, I mean, it's just how it is. So, for example, if I lived in China right now, I couldn't go out there and just freely start saying I'm a Christian, you, you need Jesus, blah, 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 right? So, as Americans, I don't, know, I don't know if you're from America, if you're listening or not, but you need to take this serious. We have everything handed to us a lot. We're in the United States. We have everything given to us a lot. Our hearts are not always clean. Your, what you do matters. So 
if you're not doing it right, are you going to go to heaven? That's, I mean, on the judgment day, are you doing it right? Are you living for Jesus? Are you saved? Have you asked Jesus to forgive you? A lot of Christians, they take it for granted. They don't see the actions that are happening in the, in other countries in the United States because we aren't living for God like we should be. Most Christians, at least. So, like, the actions, you know, you see... Um, there's a story one time, I think it was Samuel Rodriguez is a pretty large, uh, pastor. And, you know, he, I think it was him. He was preaching and he was talking about how he went to another country and all of a sudden up in the, up during, I think it was during his message, someone started screaming like bloody murder. And they, he was like, go find out what's wrong with them. Go find out. And I mean, this was like thousands, thousands of people in this arena there to see him because he was there to bring the good news. Right now. I don't always see thousands of thousands of people gathering for one person to bring the good news. Right. So he's up, he's standing there. They find out what happened. The guy could all of a sudden see in another country. So like he said, he couldn't see, he didn't know who Jesus was. And he was saying, if this is real, let this happen. And right there, he saw. So a lot of times we take for granted the freedoms we have in the United States because some countries don't have that freedom. Like, are you going to live for Jesus? Are you going to live for Jesus out in the open or are you going to have to hide? We have a chance to make a difference in this world and we don't have to hide. I don't have to hide, do you, Donald? Do you, uh, Brennan? No, and and I think that's a really good like thought with the whole concept here that we're trying to get a, across, guys. It, you know, those of you listening, you know, is that we're not just trying to to dog on the the church and tell us as Christians how bad we're doing because because we can all do better. But here's here's the reality of it: if we look at Easter and what Jesus did for us. And the fact that he chose to willingly become the sacrificial lamb, right? The sacrifice for the sin of all mankind to go through a brutal death and crucifixion, right? Like, and be hung on a cross for us. Do we realize what that implies? You know, and to your point, Matt, like to not take advantage of it, right? Because there's a hunger that I, I believe truly happens when we start to unpack and realize that and what that means in our life that, wow, Jesus did this for me. And not only did he die, but the beautiful part is he rose again. And the, the counterfeit part happens, I, I believe, guys, like way easier than we think because the, the counterfeit faith part can happen without us realizing it because I got to think about an individual such as Judas, right? Like he is a disciple, a follower of Jesus. He is seeing all of these miracles happen. He is seeing people come to Jesus and and pursue him and thousands. Of, like he was there. He saw these miracles happen. He was there when Jesus fed the 5,000, right? Like he's there with all of the things that happened with Jesus. And, and it was very clear. I would think that at that point, he knew this was the son of God, but unbeknownst and, and, and what happened, whatever that road was for Judas to kind of stray off uh, and 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 betray Jesus, right? The very individual he was there in the trenches with doing ministry um, for a couple uh, pieces of change, right? Like, I think that sometimes we, we might think, wow, no, I, I, I'm a believer. Man, I, I have salvation. Like, nothing's going to come in between me and Jesus. But Donald, kind of to the point you said, like, what are we willing to sacrifice? Are, are we really in realization uh, to what the cross means? Are we really in realization of what Jesus truly did um, for our lives? And it's not by acts. It's not by how much I can give. But it's, am I really willing to wake up each morning? And this is me, guys. Like, I got to remind myself of this. Like, am I willing to remember each morning? Man, Jesus, he gave his life for me. 
He gave it all. He gave everything for me. And how can I work not as an act of, uh, of service to myself, but, but to act, to, to give back what God has called me to do because he has brought me into freedom and he has brought me into to salvation. And if we walk into our day with that kind of mindset, I think that's going to flip this world upside down to realize a hunger, to realize a need that we have for Jesus because of what he did for us. And I think that's where we got to start, you know, because like if we look at the people that don't have it uh, the way that we do in this country and the freedoms that we have to worship the way we do, um, you could see a different kind of hunger there because they're doing it even to risk their lives. They're still willing to do it. Uh, and so we have to ask ourselves, man, what 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 is the cost of that? Uh, are we are we willing to sacrifice? And, and man, I I feel challenged by this conversation, guys. Uh, I don't know about you, but it, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, it, it puts our faith in check. Not to tell us how terrible we're doing, but to say, man, do we do we really realize what Jesus did for us? You know, puts us in check for sure. Yeah, one of the the words you said there too, um, which is what kind of came up to me earlier uh, while we were starting this conversation right here live. Um, as you said, mindset. And so let's, uh, I really, I, I like to deconstruct things. It might not be the best word, but I, I like to work backwards, kind of look at the cause and effect, right? And also the context. So so here's here's the situation. The disciples early on, Jesus, Jesus used this term a ton where he go, he who has ears, let him hear. He who has eyes, let him see. And there was this principle where he would do teachings, he would do parables, he would do illustrations, and it would go over everybody's heads, even the disciples. And then like after they would go to him and be like, Jesus, what you were talking about? And he's like, man, do you, do you not know like the kingdom of heaven? And, and so there is, there is a, a strong belief when you look at the scriptures by a lot of theologians that really you know, some, if not all the disciples really early on had this perspective that Jesus was, you know, the king of the Jews, but that he was going to rise up against the Roman empire, right? And, and actually, you know, save their people and their kingdom, right? And so there was this, there was this different thought process, different expectation, different mindset about where they were going and, and what was asked of them. And I really think that, uh, you know, a similar, uh, you know, picture can actually happen to us in the American church is I think that our expectations um, mm -hmm. aren't uh, biblically accurate. So our, our yeah. actual expectations of what um, is required of our faith, um, what uh, God has called us to do, uh, what... Uh, what being a Christian means, like it's actually just a, is really a lack of understanding and a lack of knowledge. Um, unfortunately, mm -hmm. uh, there are are some, and I'm not just saying uh, the ones that are have millions of followers online, but just there's there's some that are are preaching messages that aren't like the full gospel, and and, and un unfortunately. Um, it's, it's really, there's quite a few messages that are out there about the gospel of me instead of the gospel of Jesus. And that we're the center yeah. of the story and about our dreams and about what uh, we're going to accomplish for God instead of what Jesus wants to do and us being part of it. And the, the challenge is, is, is sometimes it's a very minor difference in some ways, but it's like, it's like when you're you're on a ship and if you just ad adjust the rudder just a little bit in the water, it is going to completely send you in a different direction. And so that's yeah. really where I believe a lot of this stems from is not that, you know, some some for sure that we just don't prioritize our faith. And, um, you know, it's just if it's not convenient for us, like there's totally that like that's very a, a very real thing. But also, I do believe that. Um, that a lot of Christians, especially in here in the U.S., actually don't have the right mentality. It's like the disciples back in the in the New Testament, where they are like, "Oh, this is my expectation of what Jesus is going to do for me and do on this earth." And Jesus is like, "No, I got something mm -hmm. real greater." But it's yeah. it's going to cost you everything. 
you know, it's, you, you have to carry your cross. You have to. And so when I look at, when I look at the scriptures, I don't see anything about like, Hey, this is going to be, you know, a, a daisies and, and tulips in the field. I just see more and more things about dying to oneself about, um, you know, the struggle about carrying your cross daily. You know, you have the scripture I, I wrote down for this in um, Matthew 7, enter through the, uh, verses 13 to 14, enter through the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction and many enter through it. But mm -hmm. small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life and only a few find it. The narrow road isn't easy. The world, it goes through the wide road. Like like the narrow road is a road of of sacrificing. Now, I'm, I'm not speaking a works gospel, but faith without works is dead. So there's a principle of that. Yes, I have faith in Jesus. And so because of that faith in Jesus, I need to live a life in, of sacrifice to God, laying my literally laying my life down for the gospel, for his kingdom, for his mission, and not my goals. And so like, I, I have to make sure with all of my goals and all of the priorities of my life that it lines up with what God's called me to do, or I'm out of the will of God, straight up. But at the same time, we need to make sure like, man, what is your expectation of being a Christian? And, and if it isn't what I'm saying, if your expectation of being a Christian is going to church you know, being a good person and going to heaven, then, then there might be something wrong. Then I really encourage you to look at the scriptures. And I really, I really encourage you to look at the gospels and look at these disciples that we learned so much from their letters and from their stories, who almost all of them, besides John really, <clears throat> were, were, you know, found to be martyred, were found to be killed for their faith, right? So, I mean, I, I think, I think that is a really thing that really stems from a lot of this guys is that yeah. um, people go into their faith, whether it's passed on knowledge or a lack of reading the scripture for themselves, not realizing really what the actual expectation of living for Jesus is. Yeah. And painting that picture that it should be for how, how God, how can you do things for me or, or Jesus? What does it look like for you to, to serve me? And that's like the total opposite. It's, it's no, how can I die to myself daily, pick up my cross and live for Christ and serve his kingdom. And I do that out of the joy of the salvation that's been given to me as a free gift. And, you know, Donald, as you were talking about that, it kind of, it kind of reminded me back to that first point we made about Peter. And if you go back to the scripture and look where Peter, he picks up the sword. And what does Jesus say? He says, Peter, he's like, if you live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. Right. And he also in, in, in John, in that scripture, in John 18, he says, should I not take a drink of the cup that my father has given me? And so from Peter's lens, he's like, I'm going to protect Jesus. I'm going to kill this guy and they won't arrest him. Right. And that was Peter's plan for what he think thought Jesus was supposed to do in that moment. <clears throat> but Jesus yeah. knew that he was this was supposed to take place and he needed this to happen in order to fulfill what God had sent him to do. And so do we kind of have a boxed in vision of what Jesus is supposed to do in our life, even with the inclination of what salvation is for us? Or do we look at it, like you said, Donald, like with what Jesus was trying to teach and how he has called us to to live and be a light to this world and to follow the way that he has called us to live, you know, and it, it is it's so easy to veer off. Um, but if we if we look at truly what Jesus was trying to teach, uh, there's there's a different side of that reality and how we can reach the world with with the message of the gospel. Yeah, I mean, we all have to sacrifice something, right? God sacrificed his son. Are you are you not going to sacrifice anything for him? Like that's the truth. You got to sacrifice something. Whether it's your time. That's the biggest thing you need to sacrifice, your time for God and your heart, yeah. of course. So that's that's what I always struggled with was sacrificing my time, right? Mm -hmm. I was always working, doing work stuff, doing the church stuff but not sacrificing my time with God. So that was my biggest thing was that sacrifice. It, isn't that, so isn't that so interesting, Matt? Cause that, that speaks to me a ton for, cause I can relate to that. 
that so many times we can justify a lifestyle of mm. separation from our relationship with Jesus because it's not downright like sin, like I'm going to party or I'm, you know, uh, you know, hundred percent fornicating, you know, like, you know, like all of a sudden, like these actual, these are, you know, all, and we don't realize like how much that affects us. And also that God doesn't want that from us. Right. No, I yeah. mean, he wants us to be loving on him all the time. Right. He wants us to be mm -hmm. sharing his word as much as we can. And, you know, sure. You can go share your word at a party. Right. But, you know, if you're not going to church on Sunday morning, and being part of the community of that the God has created for you to grow and yeah. chisel yourself. Like Donald here, he's been helping me so much the last couple of weeks. Just and you know, we have a great friendship, but you know, that friendship wouldn't have happened if Jesus didn't introduce us to each other. And you know, mm -hmm. he he brought Donald into my life lately and and it's just because I have been we I've been in this disciple we have a discipleship class going on right now and I've been pouring a lot more time in the Jesus than I have in the last few weeks than I have in the last 10 years, you know? So yeah, it's yeah. like, it's like the, when you give God the time, you get so much more. So, yeah. And I mean, yeah. he, he gave you Jesus to die on the cross. And so what are you going to sacrifice? I think time has to be the big sacrifice. Yeah. And, and there's a, uh, you know, scripturally too, it's like, that's usually like a common one. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's what is, what does God want more? The, the sacrifice for the obedience. Right. And it's the obedience to whatever he's calling you to sacrifice. Well, right, right, um, right. You know, and, and time is normally for most of us, that's a, that's a, a big one. I mean, that's like, I'm not saying it's like 99%, but it's, it's up there with, it's definitely big you know, we're, <laughs> it, for, for a lot of us, I'd say it's a, it's a common one. Um, you know, circling back as, as we, as we start to wrap up this episode, as, as Brennan talked about earlier, you know, about that original question of like, are we willing to fight for Christ, but we're not willing to die, die for him. And, and Matt started talking, you know, even both you guys did, but especially I know you were talking Matt about just other countries. And I mean, there's, mm -hmm. uh, my pastor, was, was talking about this past Sunday. So that's why I was so interested when Brennan brought it up and I thought, okay, this is totally a God thing. Um, he was saying something along the lines of just saying, um, and he said it in a very loving way, but how there are Christians in the world that are dying for their faith. But then there's Christians in the American church that aren't willing to wake up an hour early to go to church or are just mm -hmm. a little too tired to, to attend. And, and I totally am convicted by that. And don't get me wrong. Like, like Brennan said earlier, this isn't meant to be us, um, condemning you or making you feel bad. A lot of these conversations is us just really talking, going like, am I living for eternity or am I just talking about it? Is mm -hmm. it in the back of my mind knowing that, yeah, that's not, or is it in the forefront of my mind actually guiding my decisions and my actions? And so that's the whole theme of this podcast, not just this episode, but for everything. So for this one in general, it's, are you living for Christ for Christ? Mm -hmm. are, are you, are you actually living your life and have you asked Jesus lately? Have you? have you actually paused for a moment and thought about it and I don't want you to overthink cause I overthink and I'm not trying to freak anybody out. But if you just thought like, God, is there anything else you want? Am I in line with your will is in every area yeah. of my life? Is there something you want to do in my life? Because something that was very, re just re you know, such a revel, revel, revelatory thing for me was three years ago, uh, working under, Pastor Jeff Duncan, and he like really discipled me. And there's a principle that I did not have for years. And that was a principle called self-awareness. I, mm -hmm. I did not have self-awareness of where I was at, where my marriage was at, where my, me as a father was at, where me as a leader was at. I, I literally just had no idea. I didn't see it. So it was hard for me to address things that I didn't even know were there until mm -hmm. I won. I had, um, 
Christian relationship and, and men who could speak into my life and that I was transparent and honest enough to have those, that dialogue. And then two, that I actually made sure I was like Matt was saying, was consistent with my intimacy with Christ and spent time with him. It's like, you know, where David talked about search my heart, Oh God, you know, like in the Psalms, like, like, yeah. you know, it's that principle of like, God, like search me, you know, you know, my, my inner being more than I know. Right. Um, and yeah. so, and that, and that's, you know, I'll let you guys, you know, have say the final, any final thoughts you have, but that would be my prayer and heart for you guys today is like, just spend, spend a few minutes in prayer with the Lord today and just go, God, is there anything, you know, like, is there anything mm -hmm. that is there? that you need to address? Is there anything that's there that you're calling me to sacrifice? Is there anything that's there that um, I'm putting before you that I'm not willing to let die uh, for you? Uh, anything in my life, Jesus. And uh, and I just pray that that you would uh, be opened if he does have something. So anything else you guys have? Yeah, I love that. I think a final thought is just how do we how do we not live with that counterfeit faith? How do we flip that upside down? And, and truly, I mean, guys, let's let's run after our, our faith, our walk with God, our relationship with God, with everything that we got, because it's exactly what Jesus did for us. And, and essentially, that's what it was. And, and through what Jesus did and the fact that three days later he rose again, we we have eternal life uh, through Jesus. And what a beautiful thing we get to carry and, you know, to make it practical, to, to get, uh, to rid ourselves of that counterfeit faith and, and really make it something that's truly real and material in our life. Um, it's something I think that's kind of flipped my, my even prayer life with the Lord. And I'm in the midst of this process too. And it seems very simple. Like, yeah, you should have got that right. Um, but many times it's so easy for us to say, God, help me with this, protect my family. Uh, Lord, I need this, right? We, we go to, we go to God with our needs and sometimes our wants and things like that. But I, I had this interesting thought, I think in my prayer life, that's been kind of shifting. It's like, if God gave me that, how would I actually in turn say, you know what, God, how can I be used by you to bless somebody else with what he's already done with how he's already protected me and, and provided for me and my family. And it's kind of shifting that around and, and approaching God in conversation with God. How do you want me to be a blessing to others? How do you want me to be a blessing to your kingdom? Kind of, kind of exactly what Donald was saying there, like that self-awareness of not only just what we need, but actually thinking about it with a kingdom mindset of God, how can I serve you and who you've called to called me to be in my life? So are you saying, I just want to clarify because your question, so I can yeah. touch it. So are you saying like, um, Like if God answered all your prayers, how would you act, you know, or because I mean, obviously he's not going to answer all of them, right? Like the way we want it to. So Absolutely. Just, I, yeah, want, I, want, right. I just want you to clarify that just so that. I yeah, no, 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 not so that we're not getting it like, yeah, like, God, I'm going to wait till you do this in order for me to, to serve you. No, I, I think it's a great question. No, but I, I'm just saying like with that thought process of like, I, you know, again, so many times we go in uh, it with that kind of mindset of God, I need this. I need this. God, if you if you do this, then I'm going to live for you more. And it's like, no, that's that's kind of the wrong mindset of what it is. And sometimes the way that we walk into it, but it's more of how do we start with that idea of of God first, of his kingdom first. And Got then I, okay. I, believe, I truly believe that that's going to open our eyes to what God desires for our life more than us seeing what we think we need because God knows yeah. way better than I exactly what I need for my life. So yeah, if, if that makes Hold sense. On. Thanks, thanks no, for clarifying does, yeah, that, yeah. you know? <laughs> no, yeah, I, I, so I was just making sure. That's why I, I thought I thought you meant, but exactly. I was like, just making sure. So. <laughs> cool. Any, any final thoughts for you, Matt? No, I just know that you got to live for Jesus and he died for you. And, you know, this week's important for us. But, you know, we had Jesus born on earth for Christmas, so now we get to celebrate Easter. So, mm -hmm. so it's either... And what he came for. And what he came for. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, uh, take that in this week. Take that in. Sit on that. Um, on so our, our Friday for our, fri our Friday service, or we're showing Passion of the Christ. So, mm -hmm. you know... Um, we just always like to show that, uh, let people yeah, if, if you, if you've never seen that, um, it's, it, it's graphic just to, but it's definitely something that is as a Christian, something that is uh, very impactful just to really, mm -hmm. uh, even at the, probably not even as accurate as you can, but that's probably the closest thing that we have towards, um, what Jesus went through visually. So, right. Yeah. So just keep in mind, Jesus loves you. 
and mm-hmm. God loves you. So, Amen. Well, hey, we appreciate you guys joining us again this week. Once again, we are on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. Make sure you sub- subscribe, comment below, uh, share with your friends. We greatly appreciate that. We got temporaleternal.com uh, with information about the podcast as well as some cool t-shirts and hats as well. God bless you guys. Have an amazing Resurrection Sunday, Easter weekend, and we will see you all next week. See ya. God bless.